Hello, my friend. This is Arrogant Aaron, and today I wanted to answer a question that I get asked from time to time when I talk to my friends and family who don't live in South Korea. Among the foreigners who live in South Korea were asked kind of the same or similar battery of questions. The, the, the question that is kind of ridiculed or mocked by foreigners is the, the, the typical question asked, well, do you live in the north side or the, now, the south side, right? But I, I don't want to answer that question today because the question's real, that, that answer is really obvious. The question that I'm asked a lot is, do you feel safe? Are you safe? And the question really is asked in two different directions. One, you get the, you know, general, you know, is it safe? Is it, I heard the news, they said that there's, a, there's an, uh, an ongoing war and it's just, a, you know, it's just a, a truce uh, for the moment. And then the second way the question is asked is, uh, hey, I just heard on CNN, Kim Jong-un, launched another missile. Are you worried? And so I want to answer that question. Um, I won't make you listen to everything I'm going to say before I give you the answer. So I'll give you the answer and I'll explain why I feel that way. And then I'll summarize. But the short answer is yes, I feel very safe in South Korea. I feel this for really two reasons. First, you know, when you think about danger, life danger, there's a certain probability that you kind of have to rationalize. And frankly, the things that are most likely to, you know, be an ex existential threat to me are probably car accidents or random acts of violence. And being in South Korea, I feel relatively safe about that. I mean, you can say what you want about South Korean driving, but I don't, when I compare what I live, or how I live here, compared to how I live in America, you know, I don't feel the same threats of random violence. You know, South Korea is a gun-free country. Um, we don't have, or this place doesn't have any history of mass shootings. There's really no history of uh, random acts of mass terrorism. So I don't have to deal with any of those threats. You know, when my children go to school, there has been you know, no history of schools being soft targets for uh, mentally you know, uh, 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 unstable people who just wanna go in there and hurt people. You know, and so in South Korea, those sorts of things, I, I just don't feel any level of risk that I would have if I lived in America, an American city. But that's not why people ask the question. People ask the question because CNN or some other news agency, you know, on a slow day, if uh, slow news day, if Kim Jong-un launches a missile, you know, they'll spend three hours talking about you know, nuclear war and, and missiles. But this is why I, I don't think any of that will ever occur because essentially, uh, if you live in Korea a long time, you get to know Korean culture. And Korean culture, when there's a conflict, they escalate the bluff really quick. And I think if you look at Kim Jong-un's actions under the lens of Korean culture, it makes sense. He is in a weak position, so his only option is to project a very tough bluff. And I think that's what you're seeing him do. The greatest threat that really the Korean, the North Korean regime poses to South Korea would be a first strike uh, artillery 
uh, a use of its artillery. But the problem is that North Korea, to have any sustained warfare, would rely on uh, reinforcement and support of both China and Russia. And everything that, that I've come and I've thought about in my analysis is that it's not really in those two uh, nations' interest to support uh, an ongoing conflict on the Korean Peninsula because they might enjoy, you know, in a, a third party engagement with America, but because of the, you know, the, the draining of resources, of American resources in a conflict. But the flip of that is once there's a conflict on the peninsula, the probability of nuclear war uh, escalates. And neither one of those countries wants that. They both, if you look at both of them, they always are taking steps to de-escalate uh, the probability of nuclear war because uh, they don't want to die. Americans don't want to die. South Koreans don't want to die. And I don't think Kim Jong-un wants to die. And you look at all of his actions, I believe that he values his own life to an extreme extent. Uh, and that's why he assassinated uh, most of the any political leadership in his own country, including his family, that would pose any existential threat to his position or his own life. So he's king, right? So at this point, all he wants to do is to well, he wants, I think he wants to do two things. He wants to, number one, make himself regime change proof. And he did that, essentially. It, like, there's nobody, as far as I know, in the North Korean regime that would be capable of taking it from him. So there's not going to be able to be some type of CIA action where he's just assassinated and we can put in a new person. There's nobody that would be able to fulfill that role. Additionally... He wants to create the best negotiation position possible for the future when he hopes, I think he hopes, I think America hopes, I think China and Russia hope that at some point we will have some sort of negotiation position. It might be next year, it might be five years, it might be 20 years where we will, uh, we uh, the Americans will bring down all of its uh, uh, trade and economic sanctions, uh, bring them down and essentially allow him the space he needs and his country needs to economically develop. And once that happens, that furthers his goal of being regime change proof because then his people are happier because they're more economically uh, progressed. So, the final point I'd want to make is, you know, Kim Jong-un is about my age. So I put myself in his shoes and he must be aware of how outmatched he is in military might. Frankly, that's why he, I think he's developing a, a nuclear deterrent because that's his only hope, you know, Right now, his only option would, if he wanted to have conflict, would be a first strike with his artillery on Seoul. The problem with this is that he has a military that really hasn't fought any conflict for 50 years, almost, more. So, you know, you think about in his military, he has his sergeants, his officers, the people who train the soldiers, they, they have not even seen uh, uh, military conflict themselves. So you have people training their soldiers who don't have the military expertise themselves. So even if he tried to do something, I think he would be incredibly out, 
outmatched because he does his first strike. Then America comes in with their bombers, bombs all of his artillery. Then that's taken out. Then what does he do? Charge, charge the DMZ? I don't think so. So anyways, that's a really long explanation to say that I feel safe in South Korea. I feel safe because I think Kim Jong-un, I think China, I think Russia, they all have no inherent uh, upside to real conflict on the peninsula that would mean the loss of life for South Korean civilians and South Korean residents like myself. So the only other risks would be, you know, the type of risk that everyone faces. And in that way, I actually feel more safe because, you know, my alternative is living in America and America, you know, has more violent crime and that random acts of uh, terrorism and shootings. And I essentially avoid those by living here. So I don't make every decision in my life trying to be the most safe. But at the end of the day, if you come to Eric and Aaron and say, do you feel safe when Kim Jong-un launches a missile? Or do you feel safe generally that there is this you know, standoff uh, war for 50 years? Uh, the answer is yes. I feel very safe in South Korea. So to all my friends and family, to all those people who I hope like listening to me, <laughs> uh, I think South Korea is a very safe place uh, despite what uh, the news media does with the story, with the narrative, because it is so tantalizing. But I think the reason why the story is interesting to news media basically is because they don't understand Korea, they don't understand Koreans because most of the broadcasters have never uh, actually uh, assimilated or, or understood Korean culture. So, this is Arrogant Aaron feeling very safe in South Korea, living my life, and have a good day.